My name is Francis Lee. I'm the PI of the lab here at Weill Cornell Medical College. My name is Joanna Giza and I'm the first author of the study. So one of the main focuses of the lab has been neurotrophic factors, in particular one called brain-derived neurotrophic factor or BDNF. And a main hypothesis of the role of BDNF in disease processes has been that lower levels of it are predominant in mood disorders such as anxiety disorders as well as depression. And one of the main therapeutic strategies has been to, to always try to raise these levels of BDNF in these conditions. And my lab has been very interested in the role of differing levels of BDNF across development. And one of the most interesting hypotheses we came across is that it's possible that there are different isoforms of BDNF that might have different effects at different points in development. BDNF, as majority of other growth factors, is synthesized in a proform. In order to generate mature BDNF, the prodomain portion needs to be cleaved off from the pro-BDNF. And in this respect, prodomain used to be considered as an unnecessary byproduct rather than uh, being thought of as a potential ligand. So one of the main focuses of lab has been studying a very interesting human polymorphism that actually happens to be in the BDNF prodomain. It actually leads to an amino acid change from a valine to methionine at position 66. It has been widely associated with a variety of mood disorders such as depression and anxiety disorders. And in order to study in a much more systematic way, we generated a knock-in mouse that contains this human polymorphism. We added BDNF MET or VAL prodomain to the mature hippocampal neurons in culture and analyzed their morphology using super resolution microscopy. I think one of the breakthrough points of this study is the fact that you can take a small molecule ligand, not the cell adhesion molecule that you remove and you prevent the synapse formation or you prevent the adhesion of the pre and post synaptic terminals, but you actually take a ligand that exists in about 25 to 30 percent of the human population and add it to the mature spine and see it shrinking and dissolving within one hour is absolutely incredible. And we focused on the projections from ventral CA1 that inhibit fear expression following extinction that's present at the PL area of the prefrontal cortex. We tested the expression of the receptors P75 and SORCS2 in all parts of the circuitry and found that they are present together only in the ventral CA1 area during periadolescence. We inject this protein together with the anterior grade tracer uh, PHAL into the ventral C1, where express the P75 and SOX2. And those neurons project to the prefrontal cortex. And after injection, we evaluate the density, fiber densities in this area. We found that only PL, but not the IL, have degrees of the fiber density after uh, BDNF prodrome injection. And in addition to that, we also saw that we were able to induce the fear extinction deficit in the mice that had injected uh, MET prodomain. So we first trained mice to fear a tone by pairing it with an aversive outcome. Then during extinction training, during repeated presentations of this tone without the outcome, mice learned to attenuate their freezing or their fear response. And using fiber photometry, we are able to record life from the terminals of the ventral CA1 neurons within the prelimbic area of the prefrontal cortex. One of our most striking findings was that neurons in the BDNF valve owl mice actually show an anticipation of the tone in late extinction. And then rapidly attenuate the response. And basically, the lack of adaptation in the BDNF met met neurons is what we are thinking is driving the deficit in the fear extinction process.